So Benson doesn't have the same luck that Clark did. That's a loss of four on the play. And Garrett Clark, the thing you've got to talk about with him is how efficient he is. In the first game against Truman State, he was averaging 6.6 .6 yards, just about seven yards per carry. That is huge for any head coach. Bornhorst rolling out of the pocket. He's going to find one of his receivers. Nice play, but there's going to be a flag on the play. We're going to see what this is on. Pass by number 17. Alec Bornhorst trying to find his receiver 10. in Brian Hunt, but Check the pass was broken up. Jalen Johnson, Johnson on that play there on the pass play. breakup with that flag on the play. I'm curious to see what that ends up being on. I don't think it was on the tackle. This might be an off-the-ball penalty. We'll have to wait and see what it is. It's going to be another, uh, another face mask pass penalty, but this on one on Finley. Finlay there. So that's going to go into Pace's favor First here. Alex, I'm not going to lie to you. I don't think I've ever seen this many face mask penalties Me neither. in a game before. Me neither. But it's early, and, and that's, what, that's what's going to happen. One thing that's interesting about Division II football, different from a lot of other divisions of football, is these guys have only been together for a few weeks. Line. I didn't realize that until I talked to Coach Rondo yesterday. I always thought it was like they had the whole summer. There's 106 guys, 109 guys. They're still learning each other's names perhaps out there, right? So it's like Second there's still a lot of those issues where, like, you're grabbing at things that you're not really supposed to be grabbing at, making tackles and stuff that could come to haunt you on both teams here so early here in just week two of non-conference action here in college football. Yeah, I believe Coach Rondo actually said it's four weeks with the team before the opening game of that season when they traveled down to ESU. It could be different for any program, but I agree that four weeks – that the setters spent together before coming into this opening game against ESU. They're going to send Brian Hunt in motion back out. Fake to Brian Benson. Bornhorse, he swarmed. Nice move by him. He's going to take a shot downfield to Hunt. And nice defense uh, by, by the setters. That was Diallo on the coverage. Complete. Diallo was all Third over down, him there. Nine. And enough pressure there on the quarterback to make him throw a little bit far. And we've seen that so far here. Number 17 isn't impervious to that pressure. And a lot of those errant throws that we saw, those turnovers, especially back in the first half, coming from pressure on the quarterback. Diallo actually looked like he was a little frustrated. He thought he could make a play on the ball, but kind of pleading to his ref that there should have been an offensive pass interference, I'm pretty sure. He felt uh, like he it could have gone both ways, depending on who's looking. There was a lot of contact on here I think on the near sideline. Two people fighting for the ball, but... Just expressing, this is a third and way long. Let's see what Bornars has to do. They're sending her guys far. Finds Childers, and he just drops it. An incredible play by Diallo on the opposite side of the field. Two huge pass defenses. Back-to-back -back plays by Diallo. This defense has been a bright spot here this afternoon. Still keeping the setters in it. They only trail by 16, if you think about it. You get a couple scores on that board. Things look a lot different, 10-20 here in the third quarter. Fourth down and 29. I will say, Alex, it looks like a completely different team so far, especially how hard they're fighting coming out in really this second And that's really encouraging half. to see after the Strasburg game is how do you respond to this level of adversity? This is a good football team. Pace is not playing badly, you know? El Pons, oh! punts, and the setters have a chance to take it to the house. They're going down the field, and there's the first touchdown for the setters this season. And now something's going the setter's way. A huge turnover on special teams. Northwell Stadium going wild. Unbelievable play by Elliot Porter coming out on the edge. Elliot Porter takes it to the house and he can make it just a 10-point game depending on this PAT. Squilla Shodi out there.